Our final speaker is Martha Raditz, Chief Global Affairs Correspondent for ABC News. She's covered all aspects of foreign policy, including the Pentagon, State Department, White House, and has served ABC since joining the network in 1999. Uh, for many of you, you may have seen her on Sunday, uh, where she was the host of This Week for the ABC, uh, for ABC George Stephanopoulos. Uh, she was the moderator of the only vice presidential debate, which occurred at Center in 2012, and included uh, Representatives Paul Ryan and Vice President Joe Biden. Please welcome Ms. Reitz. I hate being the last one, especially after Janet and President Rausch. But I'm so thrilled to be in Louisville. I love Louisville, and, and my memories of Louisville, when I, when I landed today at the airport, I thought, I don't even really remember the airport because I was in such a zone when I landed to do the vice presidential debates. I think I was so filled with terror and dread that I, that I didn't really see anything around me. I didn't ever get to have any bourbon. I didn't, I didn't get to have any of the fun that everybody else had. Um, but it's, it's great to be back and it was great to be at Center College not once but twice and that commencement weekend or a couple of days was one of the highlights of the last couple of years. I really, really love John and Susie Rausch. I think they are people who are just idols to me, and I'm not exaggerating. I had lovely, lovely experience there. Um, Mr. Swope, I think you should go into comedy. I think, yeah, <laughs> I think you got a new career there. You, <laughs> you can really command that stage. I liked it very much, and it's an honor to be here with you tonight, sir. I'm going to start with uh, Janet Brown, who I, I think Janet Brown is one of those people that I immediately connected with. When I was asked to do the vice presidential debate, it kind of works like this. On an August and a Sunday, I'm home. My boss at ABC calls me and says, make sure you have your cell phone with you today. You're going to get a call, and you will say yes. Not in my wildest imagination did I think it would be a call from Janet Brown. I thought perhaps President Obama was going to Afghanistan, and it was one of his secret trips, and then I thought, oh, no, no, President Obama's not going to Afghanistan in August just before election. I'm quite certain that's not going to happen. So when Janet Brown called, because I wasn't covering the campaign, I hadn't covered politics for years, I hadn't covered the White House, I'd done only foreign affairs, uh, and mostly war. So maybe that's what made me a good candidate to, to, to cover the debates. <laughs> when Janet Brown called me and told me, I was truly so stunned that it was, I, I, I tell people it was like either being told you have a terminal illness or you've won the lottery because once they tell you that, you hear nothing after that. I knew so little that when Janet explained the debates, I remember saying, I think I remember saying, and how many are there? And she said, there are four. And I thought there were four vice presidential debates. So when I came to learn that it was just one vice presidential debate, I had the terror of people cramming for tests. I felt very qualified in foreign policy, not so much on the Paul Ryan budget. So I did nothing seriously but study and cram. We, um, Janet knows this, the Rauches know this, that my son plays football in Kenyon College, Ohio, sorry. So we were driving seven hours from Washington, D.C. every weekend to go see my son play. And we would, my poor husband knows more about all of these subjects now. He's also a journalist, so it was, it was great. And I could say things to him. And what do you think of that? What do you think of that? But we would listen to books on tape. We would listen to every podcast about the political season, about the economy. About I mean, a couple of things on the economy. Trust me, I was dozing off. but. Um, so I, I did everything I possibly could. It was a collaborative effort at ABC. I had a great, wonderful team of our political journalists there. But it was a great process because I'd go in the room and we'd all, it was one of those wonderful things where you all bring something different to the table. And we'd all throw around questions and we'd all decide what we thought were good questions or why. And then I realized in the room that everybody sort of had an agenda and it might not have been the same agenda I had. I didn't really 
have a reason to go in there. And I, when I say agenda, I think I didn't have an agenda. Some people in the room want to make news. Some people in the room want to punch back at some particular thing. I, from day one, wanted to help the American people understand who these two men were and what they would bring to that office. That was my sole guiding principle in looking at those debates. I am a journalist. I wanted to perform as a journalist. I wanted to challenge. But most of all, I wanted to illuminate. And that's the terror I felt. The terror I felt was not that I would fail or fall on my face. It was that I wouldn't help the American people understand more from that one evening, that one evening they got to see those two candidates. And that's what I feel like I helped the American people do. It was also, I, I, I have to say as a woman, I do not think I was chosen as a woman. I think I was chosen for whatever reason I was chosen as someone who would do a good job. But in the end, one of the things I was proudest of was young women and young men coming up to me and saying they were proud to see a woman up there. That made me feel better than anything. And it was, it was actually a turning point for me because truly sort of a woman my age, you know, you sort of say, no, 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 it's fine. I don't want to be considered the woman. I don't want to be that. But you realize suddenly you are a mentor and you have an enormous responsibility. And I took pride in that responsibility. A few weeks after, and a lot of people had come up to me and a lot of young women had come up to me. I was at an event in New York City and a young woman came up to me and she was the most enthusiastic young woman I'd seen come up to me and she said, oh, Miss Raditz, I'm so excited to meet you. You did such a great job in the debate. I'm Kate McKinnon. I played you on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> And that was just a chance meeting, although my daughter says of Kate McKinnon, she looks much better without your hair, Mom. <laughs> she did. She looked about 40 years younger, and, but, th but that, was, that was a great moment. And it was when I saw it that night, and because you brought it up, I will say that we had, after the debate, we had driven back to Kenyon College. My son made it to the debate, and there was a little drama that he wouldn't make it to the debate because he got a flat tire on the way down. Uh, so I figured he wouldn't make it in, and I said, it's okay. And just before I went on the stage, I was thrilled to hear that he made it. So my whole, my whole family was there. But we drove back to Kenyon that weekend, went to a football game, won the football game. It was a great weekend. Go home, so exhausted. Um, and um, frankly, my husband had already fallen asleep, and I'm just sitting in bed, and I go, Oh my God, <laughs> that's supposed to be me. I mean, it was just cold. Come on the TV and, and see Kate McKinnon say, I'm Martha Raddatz. I'm like, oh my God. And then, of course, my kids are like calling every, every two seconds. So that was, pre that was pretty fun. It's also, when you, when you are up there, as much as I studied and as much as I sort of tried to concentrate in the, in the couple of days, lean, uh, up to the debate, I, as soon as I walked on the stage, felt either confidence or there's nothing I can do at this point. I just have to do the best I can do. I think there were surprises in the debate. I think um, Joe Biden was more aggressive than I imagined he would be. He was more aggressive with me than I thought he would be. Paul Ryan was probably a little more um, subdued than I thought he would be. And, and you find yourself thinking in the debate how, how they're reacting, how they're adjusting. I mean, you can see sort of a little bit of a moderation in Joe Biden a little way through. You can see him changing his, changing himself a little bit. You can see Paul Ryan changing himself a little bit and reacting. But I, I just, and, and honestly, I've never looked at it. Never, ever looked at it. I just can't. I, I've seen little snippets of it, and I'm, I'm proud of it. Uh, but... I, I think the experience of watching them and being on stage was, I, you can see nothing else around you. Like for instance, I did, I had no idea Paul Ryan was drinking copious amounts of water until I saw it on Saturday Night Live. Um, I know 
but because your guy was concentrating on Joe Biden when he was and listening. I mean, that's the key. You've got to listen. You've got to react. You've got to do all that. You've got to. You've got to be as poised as you possibly can, as Janet said, and you've got to be fair. You just got to be fair. And I admire both those men. I admire, when I started, I said, I admire both these men for their public service. I am not a political person, so that was kind of a given going in. I'm just not. I'm probably the only person who doesn't have cable news on in my office all day. I don't think like that. I don't like to have it on because it sort of clouds what I think or any original thought I might have. And if I watch CNN, I'd know that they're really not that original thoughts that I'm having. Someone else probably thought of it before. But it was truly an honor to be part of that. It is a wonderful part of history. And when you think of it in the end, how important the job of the commission. You can make fun, you can criticize, you can do whatever you want, you can trash the moderators, you can trash the process, but in the end, thousands and thousands and millions of people made up their minds, changed during those debates, learned things that they didn't know before about how a candidate would react in that, such, in that situation, how they might have really felt. I actually think it's one of the only places where you do have some spontaneity. Washington, D.C. is a town of talking points. At the debates, you can't really get away with just talking points. So I think they illuminate really more than anything else in the political year who the people are who you will elect to office. Thanks. <laughs>